uh, Mariners have the day off today. It is Thursday, April 11th, 2024. Mariners have the day off as they travel back to Seattle. And as they travel back to Seattle, they hit at 38 degrees. It's not great. So we're going to go ahead and look through some of the stats for this season for the Mariners. This season, the Mariners have the second most strikeouts in the league as hitters. They've struck out 138 times while only walking 37 times. They are 5 on stolen bases, which is really good. 207 average of per hitting, 278 on base percentage, 324 slug, and a 602 um, OPS. So that's actually decent. They played 13 games, had 429 at bats, scored 42 runs, had 89 hits, 14 doubles, no triples, and 12 home runs, batting in a total of 42 runs, so all of their runs have been on, our, on the RPM. Those 37 walks are rather low, considering that the Yankees have the most walks at 66. Down in tied for 19th, that's where the Mariners are. Mariners pitching hasn't been great this season. In terms of hits allowed, is what we're going to go ahead and look at. They have actually allowed. I can't find it. We're missing. They have allowed the fourth most hits this season at 116 hits to 116.1 innings pitched. Given up 63 runs, 62 of them earned, 16 home runs. Hit seven bat batters, walk 34 pitchers, while strike well, walk 34 batters, while striking out 115. That's good for a whip of 1.2 and an average of 2.58 for opposing hitters. The lowest uh, whip this season is Baltimore with a 1.0, and the highest is Colorado with 1.78. So we are actually in a okay spot. The problem is we give up too many runs. Our ERA is 4.84, and until yesterday we had not scored more than five runs in a game. Yesterday we scored six runs, which is better than the 10th inning we scored in five games. It's a bit problematic. It's just problematic. Uh, Julio Rodriguez had a hidden sombrero yesterday. So, Julio Rodriguez has the most at-bats on the team with 51. He's had 10, he's 10 for 51 for an average of 196, scoring three runs with one double being his only extra base hit. He's walked thrice and struck out 18 times, but he does have two stolen bases. That's, that's really not good, and I don't know what to do to fix that. Scott did say something about Julio having some issues with his swing timing because of some changes he made to it, but 18 strikeouts, not great. <laughs> Crawford has also played every game, 50 at bats, scored six runs, uh, gotten seven hits, two home runs, five RBIs. Julio had three RBIs. Crawford's walked five times, struck out 11 times, has an average of 140, an OBP of 152, and an OPS of 492, also known as being below the Lou Gehrig with ALS mark. Polanco has struck out 19 times in 48 at bats, with a 167 average. Mitch Haniger in 42 at bats struck out 10 times. Ty France 10 times in 38 at bats. Mitch Garver 12 times. Al Raleigh has struck out 13 times. Dom Penzone has struck out 11 times. Rojas 6. Luke Rayleigh 8. Jimmy Moore 7. Luis Urias 9. Sebi Zavala 3. He has not gotten on base yet this season. And Samad Taylor has struck out once. That's how you get to a total of a the second most strikeouts in the league at 138 through 13 games. So that's really not good. 138 over 13 is 10.6. There's 162 games in a season. So assuming we stay on this pace, that would be 1,000 strikeouts per season while scoring on while scoring 42, uh, while only scoring 523 runs, so we'd strike out 1,200 more times than runs scored, which would be 
a little ridiculous. It's unfortunate to see that the Mariners are um, striking out so much after getting rid of Jonathan Hernandez, Derek Melinick, Eugenio Suarez, who struck out a lot, but also brought decent things to the team. I was uh, rather upset that we got rid of two of those three. I wish Melinick, who was a locker room issue in some senses with the kick the cam and everything, but Suarez and Hernandez were definitely good for the team and contributed on offense as well as on defense. Rojas is currently our best player um, as he is some amazing defensive plays and he's played both ways. Now, let's go ahead and look at our pitching. So what worries me about our pitching is the pitches per inning that our players have. As I've just broke it. When I look at our pitchers per inning, Logan Gilbert has yet to have a decision, but he does have two quality starts. Um, and he's having 10.18 strikeouts per nine and only walking one each time. And his batting average on balls in play is 213. He's got one person um, who's stolen on him. And it's bad. He's only pitching about 13 pitches per inning, so that's not bad at all. George Kirby, um, in 67 batters faced, has thrown 258 pitches, and is throwing about 18 pitches an inning. Luis Castillo, 291 pitches, 18.57 pitches per inning, but he is striking out 10.34 per nine. But his batting average on balls in play is 4.51, and he's walking. He has had two stolen bases on him, and caught one stealing. So, not the end of the world. The problem is that, that those five extra pitches um, that Kirby and Castillo have on top of Gilbert's, those five extra pitches per inning are going to add up over the course of the regular season. And it's, it's not going to be good. So, the Mariners this season are having many players who have a large amount. The lowest pitches per inning is 10.5 per pitch. And then we have the one I'm worried about the most. Bryce is at 14.08, which is not bad. Josh Rojas is actually at 13.8. Snyder's at 15. Voth is at 16. Spear is at 16. But the one I'm most worried about is Emerson Hancock at 19.5. In 44 batters, he's thrown 168 pitches. He is striking out 7.27 for 9 and walking 2 for 9. And his batting average on balls in play is 400. So I do expect that to regress down to about a 300 um, at some point throughout the season. But he needs to stop throwing so many pitches every inning. Because each time, especially because he has not thrown an entire season in the majors or minors in his career. Last year he came out for a bit of a cup of coffee and did not have much going for him until he got hurt, which was very unfortunate because he could have developed well uh, during that. Uh, the Mariners need to take this off day to work on just resetting things, uh, work on controlling the zone again and things of that nature, controlling the zone on offense and defense, figuring out how to avoid the strikeout on offense, and how to keep striking people out on defense. We actually are pretty good at strikeout inducing the team um, when we have our good pitchers on. The problem is we have one or two innings every every game. Excuse me, where our pitching implodes and starts giving up a bunch of runs, which is really unfortunate. We can't be doing stuff like that. Um, if you remember last week against the Brewers, we gave up a walk off walk after walking four consecutive batters. We walked the bases loaded and then walked in the eighth run, which was a major problem. Um, we only won two games on the road trip. Not great. Not great at all. Uh, Devish had an article in the Seattle Times earlier today basically talking about how it's uninspired baseball. Uh, which, yeah, it kind of is. We play the Cubs for a three-game set on starting on Friday. Uh, Mariners hoodie night on Friday. Salute the Armed Forces night on Saturday. 
and Little League Day on Saturday with the Mitch Hanniger folks who post game. And then um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we play the Reds, including the Ken Griffey Bobblehead. Uh, it's going to be given out twice. Uh, the 15th is obviously Jackie Robinson Day, so I'm excited to see what can happen against the Cubs and the Reds. And then our next road game starts with the Rockies, and then we'll finally get the division game of Rangers on the 23rd. We do, unfortunately, so we have this Thursday off. We have a six-game homestand before a next Thursday off. Then we go ahead and we have three-game series against the Rockies before our day off on Tuesday. No, I'm sorry, a day off on Monday, which is going to be interesting. We, yeah, um, hopefully by the time we get to see the Rockies and the Rangers, the offense is clicking. I would like the offense to be clicking between the Cubs and the Reds series, but I don't know how that'll work, especially considering that T-Mobile Park is not a very friendly park. So hopefully, hopefully the Mariners can figure something out. 